If you're creating videos, you're probably spending most of your time editing. I spent 18 years in Hollywood as an editor creating commercials for movies like ah! Hearts of the Caribbean, Guardians of the Galaxy, and Avengers. We know each other. He's a friend from work. And I've created hundreds of videos on YouTube, so I had to get fast. Here are 10 tips in five minutes, hopefully, to help you edit 10 times faster in Premiere Pro. Tip number one. Edit backwards. This works especially well if you're creating a talking head video because your last take is usually your best take. So just jump in your timeline, go to the end of the sequence like this, find that last take, check it, make sure it's good, and then get rid of all of the takes before it like this. Tip number two, use adjustment layers. An adjustment layer allows you to modify all of the clips below it. To create an adjustment layer, click on this icon in the bottom right of the project window, select adjustment layer, click OK, Drag it to the sequence. Zoom in so you can see what's going on. If it happens to be big, start to drag it out a little. Here's a bonus tip. Put your playhead at the end of the clips you want to add adjustments to. Select the edit point, then type the letter E, and bam, you have the adjustment layer. So anything I do to this adjustment layer is going to affect this clip here in the project window. In this case, this clip needs a LUT. So I will open up my color panel, choose Let Me to Color, and I will add a LUT and bam, all of the clips, in this case there are only two, one, two, but all of the clips have the same effect added to them and you can add any effect to this adjustment layer and it'll modify all of the clips underneath. Tip number three, use your keystrokes. Nothing will make you faster than learning the keystrokes. Here are a few that I use all the time. I use J, K, and L. Type J to go backwards, K to stop, L to go forwards, and if you tap J repeatedly, you'll go double speed, four speed, a time speed, and the same with L going forward. Tip number four, customize your keystrokes. This will make you even faster. Here's how you do it, and a few that I use. Just hit Command Option K on your keyboard, the keystroke to bring up the keyboard shortcuts on a Mac, or go up here on the top left and choose Premiere Pro Keyboard Shortcuts. In this box, type in the shortcut you want to modify. In this case, I'm going to look for Ripple Delete, and then just drag it to the key you want to use, in this case, B, and then bam, that becomes the keyboard shortcut for Ripple Delete. Click OK. A few of my favorite custom keyboard shortcuts are to add and edit. Instead of using the razor blade tool, I almost never use these guys. I just type the letter V. I've customized it to be the letter V. To delete this clip and bring everything over, instead of selecting it, deleting it, highlighting this and moving it over, I have made the letter B the keystroke to add a ripple delete. Other keystrokes I use several times a minute are F1, 2, and 3. F1 zooms in, F3 zooms out, and F2 deselects the clip. I have a clip selected, I hit F2 and it deselects it. Tip number five, keep a music and sound effects library. You'll end up using the same music and sound effects over and over again. I get a lot of my music and sound effects from Epidemic Sound, link in the description below. On my Mac, I keep my music and sound effects in my music folder, the sound effects in a folder called SFX. They look like this. And my licensed music I keep here. I organize it by the date I found the music and I put a little description after it so I know what it is and I end up using music over and over again. Tip number six, stay organized. This is unbelievably important and it starts at the finder level. What I do is I have a template here in my movies folder, my life untethered, my travel channel. I have a template so that I've got all of the folders in it that I need to create a project and I just duplicate this one by hitting right click and duplicate or command D on my keyboard. Then I name it with the date and the name of the project. And I'll do the same thing for the project itself. When I open the project, all of the folders are already there in order. Notice that I have a project called Z Junk. As you edit, you'll be bringing things in that you'll never need again, and I just throw them in there instead of trying to organize them somewhere else. Some of the stuff is just junk. You'll notice that in the footage folder, I have the different kinds of footage that I shoot on from my Insta360 down to my Sony. This next tip applies to any editing program. You wanna have a fast drive. You wanna ideally use your internal SSD drive, which is a flash drive. It is not a spinning drive. If your internal drive is full, you're gonna need an external drive. Don't get one of these, they're super cheap, but it's a spinny drive and it's way slower, like 10 times slower than an SSD like this one. This is a SanDisk, SanDisk, linked in the description below. Get one of these for your external drive. It's also pretty durable. Tip number eight, Plan your video in advance. This is insanely important. If you're just shooting random clips and trying to put them together into a sequence, it'll take you literally 10 times as long. Outline your video before you press record. Number nine is called a pancake sequence. It looks like this. 
if you have a string out of all of your footage, like in this case, all my GoPro footage for a sailing trip, and you want to be able to get to these clips easily without having to go back and forth between sequences or without having to go into your folders up here. You just click on the sequence like this, drag it down a little bit till you see it, make that other line, and bam, you have two sequences. You can adjust your windows to make it fit. This allows you to easily scrub for your footage and find what you want, and if you see a clip you like, you can just click on it and drag it down below. It's game changer if you have a lot of B-roll. Sometimes the audio kind of cracks and popples between edit points, so you want to add a crossfade there so it smooths it out. An easy way to do that is you highlight the edits that you want to add a crossfade to by holding down Command on a Mac or Control on a PC, and then highlight those edit points then hit Shift Command D, which adds the default audio transition, and bam, it adds it to them all at once, and the audio will be much smoother between these edit points. To change the duration of the default audio transition, just go into Preferences, choose Timeline, and right here it says Audio Transition Default Duration. I've got mine set to eight. You can set it to whatever you want. That gives me four frames on either side. Was that longer than five minutes? If you really want to make your videos pop, you want to add movie clips to them. To learn how to do that, click that video right there. That was incredible.